Now turn to part one. Part one. In this section, you will hear a conversation between a tourist and a travel agent. The tourist wants to book a holiday. First look at questions one to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, you're through to Dream Time Travel. This is David speaking. How may I help you? Hello, I'm calling to book a holiday. Great. May I have your name, please? Yes, it's Anna Sharp. Sharp, S H. Like a knife? Yes, but with an E on the end. And Anna is with double N. Right. Thank you, Anna. Now we're delighted that you've called us. Can I ask where you heard about us? It was your advertisement in、uh, one of the magazines. Was it Dazzling Destination? Yes, that's the one. Good. Thank you. It's useful to know. Of course. And did you have a particular holiday in mind, or was it a general inquiry? I think I've chosen. I like the one called Amazing Singapore, the right destination, and the prices seem reasonable. Right. Now, was it for yourself only, or? Oh no, I want to go with my family, so there would be five of us going. Okay. Now there's a choice of dates, as you know. Yes, I think. Well, we've got to back by the end of September. So if we say going on September fifteenth, that would be fine. No problem. And you can also choose the length of your holiday. Which one would you prefer? Four days, one week, or two weeks? We thought fortnight would be great. You see, enjoying a tension-free holiday to get away from it all. Yes, and you do need to have insurance. Uh huh. We have three levels. Standard, Super, and Super Plus. Standard seems a bit basic. Let's say Super. That should be sufficient. Fine. Before the tourist gets further information, you will have another chance to look at questions eight to ten. Now listen to the rest of the conversation and answer questions eight to ten. Well, that's all good so far, and the availability's okay. Have you looked through the list of options in the advertisement? I have, and I've got the list here. Some of them do seem pretty good. Which ones would you like to take? In terms of the hotel, the offer of four-course breakfast. We'd leave that. We'd rather choose the lunch buffet. I think a balcony for the room is a must. It's so soothing to sit out and appreciate the world without a lot of interruptions and distractions. Oh yes. And then the trips. Uh, I think I'll pass on the beauty therapy. I never really enjoy the spa, and golf isn't really my sort of thing. To be honest. Any more than tennis is. Uh huh. But I like natural things, so I think the night safari would be fun. You know, seeing animals in almost every enclosure. You can see them as they go about their business. In some enclosures, you are actually in with them, and that will be amazing, isn't it? Yes, I would think so. And then, in terms of getting out of town. Lying on the soft beach under beautiful sunshine, or walking through the coconut plantation under the blue sky, how wonderful! I definitely wouldn't want to miss that. I understand. Okay. Well, that's all we need for the booking at this point. Just a few details for you, and then we'll check the payment. 
That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part two. You will hear the public relations officer from the council reviewing events that were hosted by the town in the previous year. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Kingstown has been a busy town this year, with some high-profile and new events happening in and around the area. In January, we hosted the National Kayak Selections, and this competition attracted a number of well-known paddlers, not just from this country, but from Canada, Ireland, England, and Australia. Following this event, we had the nation's top bowls players descend on the township, with the national championships taking place at the Kingstown Bowling Club, attracting well over 400 players. It was a resounding success, as you could see from the numbers thronging the bowling centre in Main Street. February was the month for the seriously social rafting competition, and this was the first time Kingstown had hosted an event of this nature. It attracted 96 paddlers from all walks of life who enjoyed a great day of fun on the river. After the success of last year's open half marathon event, this year, in March, we hosted a women's only duathlon in an attempt to get more women involved in sport. The starting point was at the Kingstown Pool but an extremely chilly evening saw a huge reduction in the numbers we were expecting. However, approximately 50 participants were not deterred from tackling the event, which for many was the first time, and these hardy contestants went into the first 2.5k run with great enthusiasm. The cycle leg was extremely challenging because it was into a headwind all the way, and the last 5k run was no easier. At this point, I must thank all the volunteers who took time out to help make this event successful, especially the road marshals who did an excellent job. We must also thank the Kingstown Creative Pursuits Society for hosting the wonderful Autumn Festival. The women involved put on a magnificent demonstration of traditional and present-day craft work, ranging from ancient weaving techniques to modern pottery designs and sculpture. These ladies are highly skilled, and they got a good turnout on the day, which, by the way, they are thinking of making a biannual event. So, we might have a spring festival on its way. Winter brought with it the annual Kingstown Youth Tournament, which was a huge success, with the allocated team slots filling up fast. Teams consisted of approximately 15 youths, ranging in age from 8 to 18. The team spent the day on the fields of Prince Park, playing a round-robin touch tournament system. The event, which drew large crowds of the public who cheered and gave lots of support and encouragement for the teams, showcased some outstanding youth talent. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, what's coming up for the school holidays? Well, the town council has several plans lined up to keep the kids busy. Let's get straight into it. Program 1, which will take place around the Prince Park area, has a sports agenda and will have participants engaged in a variety of sporting activities 
such as tennis, athletics, football, and swimming. Program two is for the somewhat less active and more creative children. They will do most of their activities in and around the Lord Hall area. These will consist of cooking, craft, dance, and hairstyling. You'd be surprised at the number of children who leap at the chance to learn to cook. Not to mention the other activities. The hall will be positively buzzing. I can tell you, this is a great chance for your children to learn a new skill or brush up on one that they're already crazy about. Program three is for the more adventurous children. Because of this, we do insist on a minimum age limit of eleven years old. The Duke Recreational Area has been set aside for this program. Expect your youngsters to learn a lot about leadership and teamwork as they accomplish some of their missions. They'll engage in activities such as skateboarding, rafting, orienteering, mountain biking, and trekking. Well, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two.